No, uh, you'll be back in service soon, Daddy. Just, Amen. Um, that, bring, that, that does remind me before we I get actually preaching. Uh, and uh, I did have uh, the, the, the prophetic scorn this morning telling me to make sure that my message is short. Because we had all this, we had all this wonderful uh, Founders Day stuff going on. So she said, make it short, baby. Make it short. Make it short. I said, I, I said, all right, I'll cut it down. I'll cut it down. I'll cut it down. So I, I promise I won't be here long. Praise the Lord. What I have for you is fun. Uh, next Sunday is Chief Sunday. Amen. So come to church in your best favorite Chief's gear. Amen. Amen. Uh, and it, if you if you don't have any, just wear some red. Uh, just yes, huh? We gonna hear you what? Uh, we don't. We do not receive bears gear in here. Let me just. Say, I'm not. Uh, I'm. I'm almost a chief fan. I am the, almost there. Right. I'm a Miami Dolphin fan, true and true. But in, in, in their absence. Uh, so we got a root for our local team and support, amen. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it, my second team is most definitely the Chiefs. Uh, they've grown on me. Uh, so uh, since they've grown on me, I, I I I even went ahead and purchased some Chiefs gear. Hopefully, it gets here in time. Amen. Praise the Lord. As you know, it's got to be love. Uh, also, uh, uh, our uh, uh, anniversary service has been set, amen, uh, to May the 3rd, Sunday afternoon at 4, Apostle McConaughey, Leroy McConaughey will be ministering. So you know that he look about 50 years old and he's 71 or 72, something like that. He's, and he look, I mean, this man, he just been through so much, praise the Lord. So uh, I just wanted to give you a couple of updates. Uh, of course, we're going to have our Passover Seder and our, uh, and our Resurrection Sunday services, but you guys pretty much know when those will be. Don't forget uh, Prophetess's um, One Night with the King, Marcia Six. She needs to kind of get a, a soft count, not a hard count, but a soft count so she could kind of plan. So you all start uh, making the RSVPs and let her know that you're coming. Amen. And when, and when we get back, she'll be ready for, uh, to start really pressing forward with that. Sign-ups are in the vest of you. Or better yet, just, just uh, uh, call Kiara at 816-332-0190. <laughs> well, no, people are watching on the web. I don't want them to sign up in the vest of you because they'll never sign up. Uh, I understand. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I ask you to touch us in a mighty way, strengthen and build us up. God, uh, we honor you today in our Founders Day, God, because uh, we know that Glory by Fellowship International Church was founded in glory. So we thank you that we uh, founded in glory, founded on glory, founded through glory. And God, speak to us today as we continue to dive deeper into your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 7. When you have it, please uh, get there with me. Uh, again, Second Chronicles chapter 7. And we're going to read the first three verses, and that's going to be my foundational scriptures. That's my launching pad. Uh, the message today uh, is, uh, as I uh, did in the prayer, founded in glory. Tell your neighbor, say, founded in glory. Sometimes you have to recognize uh, that the body of Christ in whole was founded in glory, but uh, Glory Bible Fellowship International Church was founded in glory. Look to your neighbor and say, founded in glory. Sometimes we have to understand that if you found it, not only are you, you should be grounded in glory. That means you should understand that there's a grounding effect that takes when the glory comes in you. 
Uh, I, I, I know we, uh, we're going somewhere real quick. Second Chronicles chapter 7, you got it? Say amen. We're going to read verse 1 through 3. It says, Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed uh, the burnt offering uh, and the sacrifice and the glory of the Lord filled uh, the house. Say the house. Remember, we, uh, when uh, we started this, we didn't start this in a church, baby. We started it in our house. I, I want to make sure y'all understand that uh, uh, the glory of the Lord is going to fill this house. If you, uh, if you don't get anything else from this, and it, it comes after you pray. The reason why you don't see no glory is because ain't nobody praying enough. Huh? Churches, uh, 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 God, God came in and threw the money changes down because this shall be not a den of iniquity. This should be a house of. Now I got somebody that knows some Bible. Praise the Lord. Some Bible read it. Uh, and the Bible keeps on and it says, and the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. Ooh, now it, they went from fill the house to fill the Lord's house. Uh, I, I want y'all to hear what I'm saying is the glory, uh, uh, the, the, the glory Bible Fellowship International Church was founded in glory. Say in glory. Look to them and say, golly, finally knew what the glory felt like when I was way back then. Ooh, we knew what the glory was, but now we know what the glory feels like. Look to your neighbors, I know what the glory feels like. And the Bible goes on and it says, And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement, and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Look to your neighbors, say, He is good. And his mercy endures forever. I believe this in this time and a season. And as I begin to uh, expound on this text, God began to show it to me that there is a time and a season where we have to get back to our first love. When we started this church, we started this church on prayer. We started this church on fasting. We charted this, started this church on glory. Matter of fact, it, the name of the church back then was Glory Bible Fellowship uh, Church, and then it became Glory Bible Fellowship International Church uh, because the, 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 we started to see that God was moving on a more international flavor. We was broadcasting on the internet before many other churches that we were associated with even knew what the internet was. What we're doing is we are going back to our first love. The Bible in Revelation tells the church of Ephesus to go back to your first love. What I'm telling you today in this day in this season is that now that we understand who we are, 15 years later, it's important for us to go back to our first love. Look today and say, go back to your first love. The glory draws everybody to the, to the church. The reason why uh, some of us say don't come to the church is because what draws them also repels them. Them people that don't want glory or them people that want to live in a sin, uh, them people that don't want to change. I'm not telling you to invite, I'm telling you to invite everybody that want to change, everybody that's going through what they're going through. I sent out something on Facebook the other day. I said, if you're, you're uh, sleeping in sin, if you're struggling with addiction, if you're struggling with pornography, if you're struggling with sickness and disease, I believe that Jesus, uh, Glory Bible Fellowship International Church uh, can be, uh, be a miracle place for you. I'm telling you that I don't care if you're struggling with homosexuality. I don't care if you're struggling with in infidelity. I don't care if you're struggling with sexual immorality. I don't care if you're struggling with alcoholism. I don't care if you're struggling with drug addiction. What I'm telling you is you don't go to places uh, that don't understand you you go to a place that needs to wants to heal you and glory bible fellowship is that place so let the glory draw them so it says a neighbor let the glory call a man to a house founded in glory oh, i got some help i got some help look to your neighbor 
the glory, the glory, the glory. Touch three people, say the glory. It's filling the house, it's filling the house, it's filling the house. Yeah. Now, sec secondly, we, we, we find that the glory begins to operate uh, in, dis in, in a way that discerns the enemy from uh, the spirit. What am I saying? The reason why uh, the glory comes, the glory comes with fire. Look to your neighbor and say fire. Uh, the fire is meant to cleanse. Uh, the fire is purify the fire is meant to heal the fire is meant to deliver the fire meant to bring down uh things uh, that aren't of god and, and get them out of you so that you will have god tell your neighbor say neighbor it's about the fire it's about the fire uh, I, I, when i was uh, a baby christian way back when i knew what I might not know my word real good, but I knew what the glory should feel like. What I'm saying is, tell your people when you're inviting them, this is a word church, but don't get wrapped up in trying to get every word down. Don't get wrapped up in completely digging so deep in the word that you miss the glory. Because the glory is, is, is what going to clean you up. The word going to give you the, the instruction to, to keep it restored. But if, if, if you clean me up and you ain't putting a word in me, I'm, I'm not going to be clean for long. But if, if you putting all word in me, but you never clean me up, I'm not going to get it. So you get the glory to clean me up, then give me the word to keep me restored. Amen? That's why this church was founded on glory, but then we added the Bible. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't Bible glory. Right, and they, your names are important, baby. Right? All right? I mean, it, well, my name is Adam Gordon Blackstock. It's not Black Star Gordon Adam. Right? First name first. That's the that's the name that God that's the name that my dad named me. He named me Adam Gordon. Black Star came with the So when you name something you you put an order in per, on purpose. We named the church Glory Bible Fellowship. Every Sunday you see the glory. Every Sunday you get the Bible. Every Sunday you uh, feel the fellowship. We have fellowship. Now, not everybody takes part in it. That's on y'all. But fellowship happens every Sunday. At 9 o'clock, you can come and get your uh, f completely free. Let me help y'all out. For those that think uh, 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 it, it's, a, it's a labor on us, but it's free to you. Why? Because I never wanted anybody. This was my, uh, what God, I heard what God said. He said, they've been with me for three days. Why should they go away fasting? So I wanted people to be able to receive. So they, they said, oh, my baby hungry. Well, you should have brought her at 9 o'clock because we'd have fed her. That's what that is. Amen? Go, so look in there and say, neighbor, in this text, I see what Solomon was dealing with when he was praying and receiving the glory. Look today beside the glory. Go with me to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2. So first point The glory comes after prayer. Tell your neighbor, say the glory comes after prayer. More, more meaningly, more reinforcing it like 
without prayer there is no glory. Say next say, without prayer there is no glory. After Solomon prayed, then the glory came. You don't see the glory showing up without prayer going forth. Acts chapter 2, when you guys say amen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Let's say one, one accord, one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. They appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat on each of them. And they filled the house, they all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. Second point, if you want to see the glory, you need to be on one accord. Look at your neighbor and say, God be on one accord. Sometimes we miss that uh, in the upper room, they were on one accord. Why they, were they on one accord? Because Jesus himself told them to get there, I will appear. Why was it one accord? Because it was a day of Shavuot. Shavuot was a high-spirited time. I know uh, it says the day of Pentecost, but uh, Pentecost is nothing but the Greek uh, uh, meaning of the feast of seven weeks and a day 50 days pentecost is the, the celebration of, of 50 days so th what they were saying was i will meet you there again sometimes we have to understand that the church this is now this was the founding of the church the pentecostal movement of god started on that day Old Testament, we find Solomon praying, temple filled with glory. New Testament, prayer and unity. Temple, house, upper room. Meeting place, not even really a church. But it becomes a church when? God's there. Just like we was in the basement in Sweet F, 800 square feet. We know God was there. It wasn't an upper room, it was a lower room, but it felt like an upper room to us. We the only church that had an upper room that you had to go down into. Because it was such on fire. And when I'm talking to y'all right now, the, the, that the fire is coming back. Fire is coming back. The fire is coming back. Tell your neighbor, say, the fire is coming back. The fire is coming back. The fire is coming back. The fire is coming. If you can't say anything else, say the fire is coming back. The fire is coming back. In Jesus' name, say the fire is coming back. And you're going to feel it come in like a rushing wind, a rushing wind, a rushing wind. When you got to say amen. Third point, and we get ready to close. See, I could do a quick message. Book of Haggai, chapter two. I want to thank everybody over these fifteen years that has helped the glory be ushered in. For those that are new, relatively new, I'm talking to y'all. Don't leave before you fully experience the glory. I'm not telling you to leave. I want y'all here forever. And I want y'all to grow up in this church. But I'm telling you, you might leave prematurely if you don't let the glory fully sit in. Too many people prematurely move, lose, move, miss their harvest. Because they plucked it too early. Could you imagine if the Bible tells us in Book of Mark, chapter four, that it go first it, you go to sleep and it comes up. You go to sleep again, and then you start to see the stalks. You go to sleep again, and then you see one ear of a corn. And then you go to sleep again. And then you see a whole harvest. 
Imagine if you just got up and saw that one stalk and you picked it too early. You would have left the rest of your harvest. Some of us have to understand that it, it takes some time to develop a relationship with the glory. Look to your neighbor and say, I, I, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Yeah. Verse 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 6. Haggai. The Bible says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once, once it is a little while will I shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry lands, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The Bible says that you'll see a mighty change in the atmosphere. I'm not talking about uh, what uh, the, you'll see in the natural. What you'll see in the natural is earthquakes. What you'll see in the natural is um, uh, floods. What you'll see in the natural is a famine in the land what you'll see in the natural is things happening all around the world uh and you'll you get they're unexplainable why all of a sudden you see a whole bunch of dead fishes just pop up in the water or or you'll see birds uh thousands of birds clutter the earth and just drop to the floor you've seen that in there recently what god is saying he's getting ready to shake the nations he can ready to shake uh, the place and he's gonna fill this this temple with glory. Look to your neighbor. He's going to fill this temple with glory. What he's saying is there's a, a, a something that's happening in the earth realm to prove his spirit is moving. Uh, what I'm telling you is uh, unexplainable uh, uh, what they call natural uh, changes in the atmosphere is uh, yes it's natural in the atmosphere but it's unnatural and God is changing what he's saying spiritually he is getting ready to change things in your spiritual atmosphere you're going to start seeing things that were held you bound uh, not going to hold you bound anymore. He's going to see things that uh, held you uh, locked in. You're not going to be locked in anymore. He's going to tell He's sending you promotions. Uh, he's sending you new uh, assignments. Uh, he's sending you new breakthroughs. Why? Because he's getting ready to shake up the, the dry ground and make it fertile again. Things are getting ready to change all around you. Everywhere you go is going to be uh, glory. Every what you touch is going to be glory. Every, everything that you get involved with is going to have glory attached to it. What am I saying? I'm saying you become the glory carrier. You become the glory warrior. You begin to fight for glory. You begin to speak and glory comes out. You begin to minister and do whatever it takes to the glory to be revealed in us. And it's not going to be by accident, baby. I'm talking to y'all that don't, don't know much about God. God said it's not going to take all that word. It's going to take the glory that I'm going to put in you. And you're going to speak my word not even knowing it. Yeah. It, it used to be that man could get up here and recite the Bible one, word for word. But didn't have the glory. It's going to be people that don't know the Bible. Going to open up and glory going to just pop out. Uh, I'm prophesying right now. Somebody need to catch this. That you are now. I know I talked about the church. I know I talked about Glory Bible Fellowship. Uh, but now I'm talking about you. You were founded in glory. Look at this. I was founded in glory. Because when the nations begin to shake, baby, he is going to put glory in the temple. And your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. He putting glory in you. So then wherever you go, the temple of the Holy Ghost, the glorious temple is moving and shaking and things are happening in the body. I'm talking to somebody that needed to hear that they needed the glory. They needed the glory. They needed the glory. Say, I got it. I got it. I got it. But let's keep reading. I got one more scripture and I'm done. The Bible says... The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. He said, the glory of this latter house, look to there, say the glory of this latter house. That is, that is how I used to look. 
No, I take that back. The glory of this latter house, that's the, how I look now, shall be greater than of the former. That is how I used to look. I, I said, I, say, I, I know I look better than I used to. I know I feel better than I used to. I know I'm more, I, uh, even if you're not, just put this in your spirit. I know I'm wealthier than I used to be. I know my credit is better than it used to be. I, I know my marriage is better than it used to be. I know my children are better than they used to be. I know my family is better than it used to be. I know everything about me has changed because I've been felt with the glory. If you don't get anything today, say, no, the glory has changed me. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the glory has changed me. Boy, I was a hot mess a year ago, but the glory has changed me. I was a hot mess two years ago, but the glory has changed me. I was a hot mess last week, but the glory has changed. Oh, Y'all gonna help me today. What you gotta say is, I was nothing to be messed up with, but thank God for the glory. So when you leave, or you miss the glory, you miss the transformation that God has for you. We have to understand that the transformational process takes time. And, and even in rebuilding the temple took years. Rebuilding you going to take years. It took you years to get in this mess. God will shake the nations and start the transformation process. But you got to go through the change. Too many of us are all of a sudden, you got one good day. I'm leaving the church. God done bless me. And then you miss the transformational change that takes place, baby. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, the glory has changed me because I was founded in glory. 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 The gospel will teach you that that day on Calvary, Jesus Christ got up on that cross and glory showed up. He was, at bar he was buried in a borrowed tomb and when they rolled away the rock, the glory showed up. Angels sitting on the edge said, what are you looking for? You cannot look for the living amongst the dead. I come to tell you that in this day and age, on that cross, you die. And when they rolled away the rock, you lived. Not so much you, but the glory inside of you. So for those that don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm asking you, I'm imploring you now. You want to feel the glory? You want to start your change? You need to start your transition? There's only one way to do it, baby. And that's to seek Jesus in a relationship with him. Too many of us leave a good church service like this and not knowing whether they'll, they'll go to heaven or hell. I implore you, if you don't know, you're probably going to hell, not heaven. You have an opportunity right now to change that. To send your trajectory up, not down. Everybody look inside themselves. Take this moment to decide. Do you want to feel the glory of the Lord? Or do you want to see the residues of hell? I can't make it more plain than that. Just because you come to church don't make you saved, baby. 
you saved when you say Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and I receive him in my heart if you're watching on the web I got this for you the transition that you're going through woman of God man of God is the change because glory is coming in you and the enemy is getting out of you just receive the glory be founded in glory and when I tell you that founded in glory means that when the change happened that was your founding day so I was founded in glory over 25 years ago but the church was founded in glory 15 years ago If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, this, does not, this is not for you. But if you do not, every, every, all, have, all heads bowed. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, just raise your hand quickly, quickly, quickly. If you, have a, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I see you. I see you. I see you. Everybody just repeat after me. And then I'll bring prophetess up to close. Say, in the name of Jesus, I give my life to you, Lord. Please, Jesus, live your life through me. I repent for the things that kept me separated from you. Thank you, Lord for receiving my repentance and Jesus I know you died on the cross for me and on the third day when you rose you rose in me so that I may have eternal life thank you Jesus for the glory in Jesus name amen if you, if you said that you are saved But get word in you now, because now that the glory's in you, you want to, you want word to accompany you with it. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise.